Welcome to our latest video. This video is on the topic of making salts from acids and insoluble bases. This video is suitable for GCSE students. By the end of this video lesson, you should be able to understand that metal oxides and hydroxides are called bases and that when an acid reacts with a base, a salt and water is formed in a neutralization reaction. You should also be able to explain the meaning of the term salt and be able to name salts made from hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid and nitric acid. Finally, you should be able to describe and explain how crystals of copper sulfate can be obtained from the reaction of the insoluble base copper 2 oxide and sulfuric acid. Now in our previous video lesson on acids and bases, we learnt that acids are substances that split up into H plus ions when placed in water. Now a H plus ion is also called a proton and this is because hydrogen does not contain any neutrons. It contains one proton and one electron. And when a H plus ion forms, the electron is lost and that's why a H plus ion is simply called a proton. Now also in our last video lesson, we learnt the chemical formula of some main acids. Hydrochloric acid has the chemical formula HCl, sulfuric acid has the chemical formula H2SO4, nitric acid has the chemical formula HNO3, and ethanoic acid has the chemical formula CH3COOH. Now in our last video lesson, we also discussed the term base and alkali. Now the opposite of an acid is called a base and a base is any metal oxide or hydroxide. So for example, copper oxide is a base because it's a metal oxide. Magnesium hydroxide is a base because it's a metal hydroxide. And if that base dissolves in water, it's classed as an alkali. So an alkali is just simply a soluble base. Now we also learnt in our last video lesson that alkalis such as sodium hydroxide can also be described as substances that split up into OH- ions when you put them in water. Now in this video lesson we're going to look at the meaning of the term salt, we're going to look at how we name a salt and we're also going to look at how we can make a salt using the reaction of an acid and an insoluble base. So let's start with the meaning of the term salt. Now salts are chemicals made from acids. In a salt, the hydrogen atoms in the acid are replaced by atoms of a metal. So for example, if we take the acids that we've learned previously, hydrochloric acid has a chemical formula HCl. A salt would be sodium chloride because I have replaced the hydrogen in hydrochloric acid with a metal atom, sodium, and sodium chloride has the formula NaCl. Now if you make a salt from hydrochloric acid, the salt's name ends in chloride. So for example, if I wanted to make copper chloride, I would use hydrochloric acid. Now salts made from sulfuric acid are called sulfates. So sulfuric acid has a chemical formula H2SO4. Magnesium sulfate is a salt formed from sulfuric acid and I've replaced the hydrogen in sulfuric acid with a magnesium atom and the chemical formula of magnesium sulfate is MgSO4. Now nitric acid has a chemical formula HNO3 and any salt that's made from nitric acid is called a nitrate and potassium nitrate is an example of a salt made from nitric acid and it has the chemical formula KNO3 and once again I've replaced the hydrogen with a metal atom. So you have to remember that salts made from hydrochloric acid are called chlorides Salts made from sulfuric acid are called sulfates and salts made from nitric acid are called nitrates. 
Now when an acid and a base or alkali are added together, they cancel each other out and you form a neutral solution, pH 7. And the reaction is classed as a neutralisation reaction. And during this reaction you form a salt and water. So this word equation symbolises what takes place. An acid plus a base makes a salt and water. And in this video lesson, we're going to look at how the salt, copper sulfate, is made using the base, copper 2 oxide, and sulfuric acid. Now to make copper sulfate, we're going to use an acid, sulfuric acid, and an insoluble base. And the insoluble base we're going to use has to contain copper because we're trying to make copper sulfate. So we're going to use copper 2 oxide. Now we're going to call it copper 2 oxide because the charge on the copper ion is 2 plus and there is another form of copper oxide where the charge is 1 plus which is less common. Now if you make a salt from an acid and an insoluble base there are essentially three main stages. The first stage is to add the insoluble base to your acid and warm the mixture. We do this to speed up the reaction. The second stage will be to filter any unreacted base. And the final stage will be to take the solution after filtering, heat it up and evaporate off some of the water so that you can have crystals of your salt. Now the following word equation represents the reaction taking place. So copper oxide is our insoluble base. It reacts with our acid, sulfuric acid, and it makes a salt, copper sulfate, and water. And the reason we get copper sulfate is because we used copper oxide, a base, so that's where the copper comes from, and sulfuric acid, the acid, and remember any salt made from sulfuric acid is a sulfate, so that's why the salt's called copper sulfate. So now let's put these steps into practice to make some copper sulfate. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to measure out some sulfuric acid and put it into a beaker. And then I'm going to warm my acid before I add my copper oxide to it. Now the reason I want to warm the acid is because having a warm solution is going to speed up the chemical reaction. Because you remember that you've learned previously that reactions go faster at higher temperature because particles move faster, they have more energy, they collide more, and there's more chance of what we call a successful collision. And successful collisions cause reactions to take place. So after warming my acid, I'm going to add my copper oxide, which is a black powder. And you'll see that the copper oxide powder disappears and forms a blue solution. And the blue solution is copper sulfate. Now, copper oxide is insoluble. So the fact that it's disappearing is telling us that it's reacting and forming a new soluble substance, copper sulfate. Now I want all the acid to have reacted. I want all the acid to be neutralized. So to do this, we keep adding copper oxide, we keep adding the black powder until it stops disappearing. Now when we reach a point that the copper oxide stops disappearing and I can see it clearly in my beaker even when I stir it, I know that all the acid has been neutralized and therefore I'm ready to go to the next stage. So the next stage of the process is filtration. So we filter the mixture because we want to remove any unreacted copper oxide. So we're trying to remove this black powder from my copper sulfate solution. So we filter it 
using a filter funnel and filter paper. And then we take the blue solution that comes through after filtering, we put it in an evaporating basin and we heat it up. So instead of using a gauze to put the evaporating basin on, we're using a pipe clay triangle and we're using a blue Bunsen burner flame because we want to get a really high temperature. And we are heating up the evaporating basin to evaporate off some of the water. Now what we usually try to do is to evaporate around about two thirds of the water. And once this has taken place, we switch off the Bunsen, we let the apparatus cool down and we take our evaporating basin and we leave it on a windowsill and we normally leave it a few days and then we'll get nice large crystals forming as the rest of the water slowly evaporates. So now let's test your understanding of what we've covered in this lesson with some practice questions. So read for the questions, pause the video, have a go at them and then we'll go for the answers. So now let's go for the answers to question one. So question 1A is asking you why the copper oxide acid mixture is warmed. And there's one mark for this. This is to speed up the reaction. And then for part B, you're asked why the copper oxide is added until no more reacts. Well, this is to make sure all the acid is reacted or been neutralized. One mark for that. Now part C is asking you to explain why the mixture is then filtered. Now, it's to remove unreacted copper oxide. I'd also accept it if you said to remove excess copper oxide. And there's one mark for that. So here's our next two practice questions. So read for the questions, pause the video, have a go at them, and then we'll go for the answers. So now let's go for the answers to questions two and three. So question two is asking you to write word equations to describe the reactions of copper oxide and sulfuric acid and copper oxide and hydrochloric acid. So the first one is copper oxide plus sulfuric acid goes to copper sulfate plus water. And the second one is copper oxide plus hydrochloric acid goes to copper chloride plus water. Now remember when you have sulfuric acid, the salt that you make is a sulfate. When you have hydrochloric acid, the salt you make is a chloride. If we'd had nitric acid, it would be a nitrate. And the first part of the name comes from the metal in the metal oxide. So it's copper sulfate because we started with copper oxide. Now for question three, you're asked what type of reaction has taken place when an acid is added to a base. This is a neutralization reaction. One mark for that. So here's our last set of practice questions. So this comes in three parts, A, B, and C. So parts A and B are on this slide. So read through the question, pause the video, have a go at it, and then we'll look at part C. So here's the last part of the practice question. So once again, read through the question, pause the video, have a go at it, and then we'll go for the answers. So now let's go through the first part of question four. So 4A is asking to state what the pupil can see when all the acid has been used up. Well, the pupil would see black and reacted copper oxide powder in the beaker. One mark for that. And then for part B, part one, name the process used in stage two. Well, stage two is filtration. I'd also accept filtering. One mark for that. So now let's go for the last part of this question. So it's asking you to name the substance removed during stage three. Well, in stage three, you are removing water by evaporation. So if you said water, one mark for that. Then it says, give the name of the base used in this experiment. So it's copper two oxide. I'd also accept it if you just said copper oxide, one mark for that. Now the last question is asking you to give the name of the salt formed in this experiment. So the salt formed is copper sulfate. And I'd accept it if you spelt sulfate, S-U-L-F-A-T-E, or S-U-L-P-H-A-T-E. One mark for that. 
So that concludes this video lesson. So after watching this video, you should now understand that metal oxides and hydroxides are called bases, and that when an acid reacts with a base, a salt and water is formed in a neutralization reaction. You should also be able to explain the meaning of the term salt and be able to name salts made from hydrochloric, sulfuric, and nitric acid. And finally, you should be able to describe and explain how crystals of copper sulfate can be obtained from the reaction of the insoluble base, copper two oxide, and sulfuric acid. So that concludes this video lesson. So please check out our YouTube channel, Dr. O Chemistry, which has lots of GCSE, AS, and A-level videos, and our Twitter site, at Radochemistry.